Good morning, everybody. It's been a little while since I've been on here sewing, so I thought I'd share some of my early morning stitching with you today. And uh, at the moment, I'm stitching Sashikov, which is essentially a running stitch, Japanese style running stitch. Um, and This was a gift from my sister. She came to visit and bought me this little kit from QH Textiles. And it's the Sashiko Teddy Bear. So all of these pieces will be cut out later to sew together this little head to form a teddy. If you're not familiar with sashiko, it's a Japanese traditional art of um, decorating, but also repairing textiles. So traditionally it's done with indigo dyed cloth. Just got a little knot going on the back here. And a cotton thread and the sashiko thread differs from other threads in that it's um, I would say a little coarser it's not it's not smooth um, oops I'm slipping sorry and uh, so I'm just realizing that my light under the camera here is extremely bad. It's very difficult for me to see. And that's better if I come over here, you can still see, right? It's amazing to watch very experienced sashiko stitches because they can do this extremely quickly and in fact hold it differently from what I'm holding it now. So you just gather a few up on your needle at the time and then pull through and then ease the fabric out. So with the sashiko designs, it's good to work out your path. So with these ones, I'm doing the like the inner, and then that, and then that, and then that would take you quite close to the next inner. You do the inner and then work your way to the outer, you'll end up sort of close to different designs. So I'm close here, so I'm going to do this next, then this, then this. Then let's see if I come to here. So you're trying, you're trying to sort of use your solid thread without cutting and knotting as much as possible. Um, anyway, back to what I was talking about. I was talking to, talking about, um, the mending aspects, so it's also used to, to quilt layers together, but it meant that you could patch fabrics that had worn out as well with a new piece and just reuse the textiles and not waste them. But yes, certainly these were used to make, um, this style of stitching was used to make padded or layered um, 
jackets and vests and things as well for warmth. I love this for those times when your hands just want to do something but your brain doesn't. <laughs> Especially these kits in kit form because it's all the stitches are marked and you just follow along. And this is a nice compact little thing so you can see mine's a bit crushed. It's been coming with me everywhere I go so whenever I've got a minute I just pull it out and stitch. So it came with me this week to Mayfield Gardens at Oberon. So Mayfield is a privately owned garden um, on 65 hectares out at Oberon in country New South Wales and They've generously opened it to the public for an entry fee, of course, but oh my goodness, I, I cannot rave enough about that garden. It was spectacular. And so we went out there glamping. So glamping is where you are in a tent but have a proper bed. Well, a proper mattress anyway. And... Um, They have a cafe out there as well for your meals. You're not allowed to take your own food. And it was just the most beautiful experience. Those gardens are incredible. Now, we're not campers, my hubby and I. We don't enjoy it. <laughs> Turns out we don't enjoy glamping either. But... Uh, the advantage of glamping meant that we had a full 24 hours or longer if we had a wanted in the garden. So that gave me enough time to see it all. I just, um, my brain can't wrap itself around how <laughs> anyone can have such wealth to create such a beautiful place. And I think how expensive it is just to put in tiny little plants in a garden to sort of see all these incredible trees and oh it's such beauty anyway so it's autumn in Australia at the moment so we had all the beautiful autumn color and they planned that garden beautifully you had the vibrant red leaves and the brilliant yellow leaves and Oh, it's just exquisite. So gorgeous. So, yeah, I was just amazed as I walked around the wealth um, that must have been required to create such a place of beauty and really overcome with gratitude that someone would take their wealth to create something so beautiful and then generously open it up so that we can see it. It was spectacular. So it has um, water gardens. You can see a lot of Japanese and Chinese influence around the water gardens. And of course, Oberon's a very hilly place. And so you work your way uphill, essentially, to all different garden areas. And um, they talk about the brilliant star view, stargazing at night in Oberon. And, you know, pretty much anywhere in Australia, the stargazing is pretty good, but... They were right. I looked up at the night sky and it was perfectly clear and oh, the stars were just incredible. So if you ever get the opportunity to go and see Mayfield Gardens at Oberon, don't hesitate. Go by all means. It 
was incredible. Yes, yeah, so I had this in my little bag and sat at my camp chair and stitched away waiting for dinner. So this video today I'm aiming, oh so you can see I didn't do so well there, because the light's not good for me. So this is too big, that's too short, that's too short. So I don't unpick a lot when I'm sewing, I tend to let it be, but that's really not good. I'm going to take those back out. This is the other thing you get a bit with the um, threads for sashiko is this untwisting. Um, and while the idea is that the threads will sort of fatten out a little bit, we don't want it like that. So I'm going to unpick back to there and twist the thread. So it's not a sewing project without a little bit of unstitching. It's not behaving very nicely. And I've just realised I've come to you without scissors. Watch the motion for a minute. I'm going to move you. Sorry for the wobbling. I'm just going to cut it because it's not behaving well to be unthreaded. just to keep smoothing it out. Oh, I might come back to here. Okay, let's pull it to the other side.
Now, the other day, I went on the loveliest sewcation, a lovely little sewing retreat. <laughs> and it wasn't in real life. It was on YouTube, of course. And so I will find the video. Oh dear, look what I've done now. Can you see when I'm tied off, I've put a stitch through there? That's a deal breaker. I can't live with that. A lot of fun picking today. Um, yes, the staycation. So I will find the video and link it below. Where I think it was Rachel was generous enough to take us on her little trip away with her sister and shared her projects and took us shopping in the Cotswolds. I mean, how delightful does it get any better than that? It was fabulous. So I'll try and remember and link it when I upload this today. So I am curious to, to know why you're watching my channels. What are you looking for? What do you enjoy? YouTube has stopped showing my videos to many people. And it seems the people then it shows the videos to are the wrong audience because they bow out pretty quickly. The, um, so yeah, so I'm sort of thinking... <laughs> What does my audience like to see? So are you just interested in seeing whatever it is I'm making? Or are you here for a specific thing? Are you here to see slow stitching or embroidery? Um, are you here just for company as you're stitching? Or inspiration for your own stitching? Or actual more learning tutorials so if you wouldn't mind taking a moment to let me know why you watch that would help me immensely in deciding what to share with you I know a lot of my viewers watch on television sets. I can see that statistic and so for that reason that makes it harder to like or leave or comment but they do say that liking and leaving a comment is what gets YouTube to share the videos to other people. So I would appreciate it if you do like <laughs> leave a like congratulations to my competition winners from last week the lovely Tony had given me an idea to turn my little fun stitchery into a wall hanging and so I decided to cut extra as I did mine to make up a little kit and that was won by Joanne congratulations Joanne I always love hearing from Joanne in the comments and um, I've sent the original wall hanging out to Tony to enjoy beautiful lilac sky outside this morning it's not even 6 a.m. yet and uh, it's sounding as if we're going to get rain it's sort of that gentle wind before the rain comes I think I apologize if the sound is low in this video because I do get up so early 
in stitch I do need to be considerate of my family and not talk loud. I'm an early bird in a house full of late sleepers. <laughs> and so this is when I get home, get my stitching done. So I'll show you in a, the next bit the other way to hold and stitch this. It's not as doesn't come as naturally to me. And so it's two have your finger underneath as you're guiding the needle. It's certainly much quicker when you're going straight. <laughs> going around the bend's a bit and tricky. Maybe if I just show you down here for a second. See some of my fingers underneath? And it's just gathering like this. So it's quite quick to do when you're going in a straight line. The stitch lengths. is supposed to represent a grain of rice. Of course, Japanese rice is um, a, a short grain. It's a short, stubby rice. All right, where did I end up? I ended up here. It's not very close to anywhere, so I am going to knot off. Seems I've gotten up before the birds even this morning. This <laughs> I can hear a little chirping start, but maybe it's that sky. I had to have an infusion of iron two days ago and <laughs> I can't tell you how life-changing it has been. It <laughs> I have suffered for years with debil debilitating pain. In my feet when I first stand up and I'd seen a podiatrist who didn't really tell me anything other than to stretch my calves, which I was doing, um, and to go and buy a certain brand of shoe. And I already have the um, plantar fasciitis arch supports in my shoes. It started originally that it was just in the morning when I got out of bed that I would walk like I was 100 years old. It felt like I was walking on broken bones. And it spread to be every time I stand up. And it goes away. Like the more you walk, it sort of starts to ease off. Well... They told me that the iron infusion would probably take a week to make me feel better. 
but that pain in my feet went already. I'm, I just can't believe it, that it was just an anemia, anemia problem. So I can now just stand up and walk normally and that pain is not there. <laughs> to think I suffered for so many years with that pain, couldn't find the answer. Thought it was either my vascular issue or the plantar fasciitis. I'm just thrilled. Absolutely thrilled. And I've suffered a lot with stiffness as well. And um, just that I, I could just bend down and touch my toes, which my husband found very funny. <laughs> Thought I was very amusing being so excited that I could touch my toes. So, the, you know, they talk about that you'll feel tired and fatigued if you're anemic. But I've, I haven't heard before about the mus muscle stiffness and pain. I feel like a new woman. Oh, that one's too short. How'd she come? This weekend, the Hawkesbury show is on. I don't live too far from the Hawkesbury. Love a little trip out there. So we might head out. I always love looking through the art and craft pavilions and seeing all the beautiful work. I'm wondering, would you be interested in seeing it if I head out there let me know and I will film some footage if you'd like to see it I'll probably pop that up next week if um, if you're interested okay so I've got this thread mucked up about there so this is getting back to me saying it's not as easy a thread to work with as other cottons because it is coarser. I do find it tangles and knots more. And, uh, if you're working with, say, a mercerized crochet cotton. So you're always looking for your straight line. So like in this pattern, um, people see different things when they look at it. Some people sort of see uh, flowers straight away. My eye tends to go straight to the star type shape. This one I see. Um, but again, you find the straight lines. So this one's actually stitched like, see the straight line there through the center? See how there's sort of diamonds here? So the straight line through the center. Then you do these lines that are radiating out like this. And if you look carefully, you'll notice that it is still straight lines through the center of diamonds. 
then you come back and do the diamonds. So you do this and then zigzag it. Zigzag it back, do the diamonds all the way back. You're back where you started. And um, then you'll find that um, when you're finished, you'll have just these straight lines here that run through the points of the diamonds to stitch. And those do just run behind the diamond. You will take a little sort of stitch behind the diamond. Um, out of all of them, out of all the patterns, this one's my favourite to stitch. Um, this one I was just stitching, you just stitch in the um, circles and I found it really, really relaxing to stitch this one. So it's um, really good doing a project like this where you get a taste of all the different little um, patterns so you can sort of start to know what you enjoy. This one as well. Um, it's called Hitomizashi this style, like that you're just doing one stitch. Um, everything's one stitch apart. Um, this one as well, you're just stitching the straight lines. Ignoring the pattern, stitching the straight lines, and then the pattern emerges. I don't enjoy doing this so much. But yeah, that was my favourite. And I do quite enjoy the look of this pattern as well. Okay, so that's its body. So I've still just got that part to do. That's the head gusset. Head. Um, these would be the ears and the paw pads. We have arms, it must be on my other piece. I am curious what this long rectangular piece is for. Maybe a scarf, because it's not a part of a bare body, that's for sure. Oh yeah, and here's our arms and legs. So if you want to see me working on this project more, please let me know that too. Um, or even, I, I used to be a bear maker, teddy bear maker. So I could even show you making a little teddy bear as well. So let me know what you'd be interested in the comments. I, I'd love to hear from you and I'd really appreciate you taking the time to do that. Hope you have a lovely weekend stitching everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.